guys, this is Tasha from the Scruffy Fam. Um, so today we're going to be talking about making fire cider for the winter. Um, it is like 39 degrees out right now, super cold, which is why we are inside. On my blog, Earthworm Botanicals, I have made a post about how to make fire cider, um, but it didn't have a video with it. And so now that we're doing our YouTube channel as well, I wanted to add that in. Um, and also I'm going to shake it up a little bit today and show you some other options that you have um, aside from just kind of your basic fire cider. There's really a lot of things that you can do to customize it to your family um, or even just kind of shake it up and make it more interesting. We're going to do that today. Um, I'm going to be making a chai fire cider and it's actually going to be made with kombucha vinegar instead of apple cider vinegar and we'll talk about that more in a second here. So first I'll show you the basics. Okay, so our ingredients today, um, so we have garlic, uh, an onion, you can use any kind of onion you want. This one's a store about onion because we ran out of all of our onion that we grew this last year. We have a chunk of ginger, and then these are jalapenos that we grew in our garden and then dehydrated. I don't actually know how spicy these are going to be, but I guess we will find out when we're all done. So one thing that I really wanted to talk about with the options today is that fire cider really is a food medicine. Um, so if you don't like garlic, then don't add garlic. If you really love onion, add a ton. Um, you know, just like any cooking recipe, you can substitute ingredients, you can change proportions of ingredients. It's really up to you and how your family wants it to taste. Um, if you really can't handle spiciness, but you're okay with garlic, um, the garlic and onion will also help to boost your circulation through your system, which is one of the points of fire cider. So even if you have to completely take out the jalapenos and don't have any peppers, um, no horseradish, no ginger, even if you just made this onion and garlic, you would still get a lot of benefit out of it. So really please do tailor it to um, the flavors that your family will enjoy. Um, another note on the spiciness is that you really can change what peppers you're working with. Um, if you like a little bit of spicy, you can have, you know, like maybe half of a jalapeno. If you really, really like spicy, then you can use habaneros or you can go super crazy with something like scotch bonnets or even a ghost pepper. So it's really up to how you guys want it to taste and how spicy you want it to be. Please customize this to your family and what you guys want. First, what we're going to do is we have to cut all these up. Um, now obviously the jalapenos are already cut up, so those are easy. I don't have to do anything with that. Um, if you had a fresh jalapeno or any other pepper really, um, then you, if it's a really spicy one, then you probably want to wear gloves. <laughs> I've learned the hard way. Um, even cutting these jalapenos, I didn't, and I was still, my fingers were still spicy for a few days afterwards. Um, especially if you were going to do something like a habanero or hotter, you definitely want to wear gloves. You don't want that in your eyes, trust me. Um, so it doesn't really matter how you cut the other components. So I'm going to go ahead and chop these guys up and then we will move on to part two. We have our ingredients for our fire cider and... So one thing you might notice I don't have here is uh, the horseradish. Um, I'm really not a huge fan of it, and also our grocery store didn't have it right now. Um, so I really wanted this to be about what you can get easily at your grocery store to make it super accessible. So we don't have it, we're going to go on. Um, instead I did use an entire bulb of garlic, I think it was probably like 12 cloves. Um, so I really like garlic, so there you go, mm. substituting. And my two year old keeps trying to steal the onion from me. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get all of these ingredients in the jar and then we're going to talk about our um, special edition that we're doing today, which is the chai spices. Alright, and I'm back. It's uh, after dinner, kids are in bed. It's the reality of trying to record videos with four small children in the house. Um, so, we have the base of our fire cider here. So, the chai spices that we're going to be adding are nutmeg, cardamom pods ideally, this allspice that we're using. Um, the only one that I have access to is ground unless I were to order it online and the whole point of this was to stick to the grocery store. Um, if you can find whole allspice, all the better. Whole cloves, cinnamon. 
So aside from just tasting good, our chai spices um, are also medicinal. All of them have a couple of things in common. One is that they are stimulating. They're going to increase blood flow. Um, some of them are specifically stimulating to the brain to help focus. Some of them are specifically stimulating to like your fingers or your toes, kind of those extremities that tend to get cold. Um, they all help to warm your body and they all help to boost digestion. We're kind of doing this to combat some of the heavy foods that we tend to eat this time of year. Um, so all these are going to be really great for that. Um, one thing that I wanted to add, just as kind of a safety note, if you are pregnant, or could be pregnant, um, I would stick to just the cinnamon and the cardamom. Um, the allspice, nutmeg, and clove have some concerns, possible concerns with pregnancy, um, that they might be a little bit too stimulating, um, either for uterine contractions or to um, kind of induce bleeding. So both of those are bad when you're pregnant. At a food dosage, all three of those are completely fine. So, you know, coming up to the holidays, don't concern yourself at all. But at a medicinal level is when there starts to be concern. Um, in the blog post, I'm going to be putting in all the measurements for all this stuff. However, um, let's go ahead and get them added. Okay, so we have all of our chai spices added, you can see there. Um, the cardamom I did break down a little bit just to kind of open up the seed pods. So now we are going to be adding our vinegar. Um, in a normal fire cider, you would be using apple cider vinegar, um, which is great. It's super healthful. It's best if you can find it raw, preferably still with the mother in there, um, which just means that it's still alive. It hasn't been pasteurized. However, <laughs> Um, I have twins, and so best laid plans, sometimes things go longer than they really should. Um, in this case, I tried making kombucha, and it sat for a good two or three weeks too long. Um, so now it's turned it into kombucha vinegar. However, we don't need to throw that out. It's actually uh, much along the same lines as apple cider vinegar. It has acetic acid. Um, it's not quite as strong as apple cider vinegar so you probably won't need to dilute it quite as much um, and there's a whole host of other things you can use it for i'll get into that in another video and blog post um, however today i just wanted to say that if you happen to have some really old um, kombucha that just brewed way too long um, don't throw out the vinegar it's super useful for a lot of different things today i'm going to use this to make my fire cider um, and it'll actually be interesting once um, it finishes brewing and I add some honey I am curious if this will start to grow its own scoby <laughs> that would be kind of fun um, we shall see so have my jar of spices Woo! one of the things that I really love about using kombucha vinegar is that it is living so it's full of probiotics um, that's kind of the point of drinking kombucha is to get your probiotics naturally so by using this vinegar we will also be having a living fire cider that will also be probiotic so this is hugely beneficial um, in the winter time but probiotics are really critical for your gut health not only do they help you break down food and absorb all those nutrients but they also help boost your immunity and they're even finding that your gut health has a lot to do with your mental health because you actually have a lot of those same serotonin receptors in your gut, actually more in your gut than you do in your brain. So that's one way that we're gonna boost the health benefits of our fire cider. So really, super easy. We're just gonna pour it in. I do have another bottle of this in case it's not enough. And ideally you wanna make sure that you have your liquid coming up over um, especially the food, like the onions and garlic and stuff. Um, if it's not, then you can very easily start to grow bacteria, bad bacteria, and then it molds. And so then this is the part where I grab a chopstick and just kind of come in here and poke it around and just help to get any of those air bubbles out because we want to make sure that all of our ingredients come into contact 
with the vinegar. It looks like we might, we might need to go get our my other bottle. All right, so there we are. We are all full. Um, and oxygen is the enemy of anything brewing. So I have this, the liquid is all the way up to the very top. You want to make sure that you label it so that you don't forget what it is, um, and especially so you don't forget when you made it. Um, and then put it somewhere in like a cool dark place for four to six weeks. After that, you can strain out all of the solids and the powder through some cheesecloth, um, just in like a normal strainer and add honey to taste and bottle that. Keep that in a cool dark place. Okay, so a couple of other points that I wanted to make. Um, one is that if you use fresh kombucha vinegar, you want to make sure that you don't put a tight lid on it. I actually just put um, a paper towel with a rubber band over the top because um, technically this is still living. When I opened the bottle of vinegar to pour it in here, it hissed. Um, you know, like when you open a soda bottle and you get the carbon dioxide ex carbon dioxide escaping. Um, so I really would, do not want my fire cider to turn into a bomb in my kitchen. So you want to make sure that you have some sort of lid on there that will let it vent those gases so they don't just build up in the glass jar. Another note that I wanted to make as far as uh, bottling is this is actually a, an old batch that I kind of forgot about back in my kitchen. Um, and so this is how I used to do it is it's just the ring and a plastic bag. One thing if you use the metal mason jar rings is that the vinegar acid can actually corrode them. This is another patch that I forgot about. And so for this one you can see I actually used a plastic lid. I really love the plastic lids for um, doing any of this kind of vinegar medicine. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to be um, filtering these two older batches so you can kind of see the process um, because the one that we just put together isn't ready yet, obviously. It still needs to brew. So how we do this, um, it's not anything too fancy, but there are a couple pieces that I've picked up over the years that make this way easier. So first would be a giant... Uh, really just a giant bowl. This one actually technically is a measuring cup. Um, we use this sucker all the time. Um, pretty much any time I'm making anything medicine or yogurt, use this. Um, and then here, see it's just a normal like pasta strainer. It doesn't have to be too fancy. Like I said, food medicine. And then this handy dandy um, little bag here. This is in place of cheesecloth. One of these batches um, has some herb material in it, so it would obviously go right through these really big holes. So we want to make sure that we have something that will catch all that. So the steams are on the outside, super easy to clean. And it has a drawstring, so I just stick it inside, fold it over the edge, and tighten it down so it doesn't go anywhere. And then this is one of my favorite medicine tools I picked up, I think, at a craft fair somewhere. Um, I wanted a spoon that I could really press hard and not have to worry about it breaking, which is why I picked the one that has a really thick neck right here. All right, so we are gonna get started. Um, so it's really ridiculously simple. I'm just gonna unscrew. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna unscrew the lid. Oh, geez. Okay, so, real life moment. Don't use plastic bags under metal rings and then forget them for like two years. <laughs> so we actually had to cut the bag open and put it into a big old measuring cup. So learn from my mistakes. That's why we're here for help, to help you guys out. All right, so pretend this is a mason jar. <laughs> Just gonna pour it in. Okay, so you want to make sure they get all of the plant material in there that you can because we're going to press it and try to get everything out. And then I'm going to open up this one. This one should be much easier to get into. Aha, see? Opened right up. Use the plastic lid. Alright, so this, I'm going to add these together. That's totally fine. Alright, so 
So as you can see, the liquid is trickling through. And so this is what we have up here in the top. So you're just gonna press this down. And the other reason that I really like this bag with the drawstring is that I can just tighten it up here and then it turns it into a bag. And you can see then you really get the liquid out. You can kind of turn this a little bit here and squeeze this way also. Try and do this one handed. Great, so we got everything pressed out. This is how much actual vinegar we have left. So then I have a little mason jar. Just gonna pour that in. There's one reason why I like having a really big measuring cup. So we're gonna put our plastic lid back on. I'll make sure that we label this. One thing that I like to do is actually have like a little four ounce bottle that sits on our kitchen counter. And then I will dose from that instead of trying to like pour teaspoons of this. I'll use this jar as kind of like our backstock and then I'll just refill the little four ounce jar as that runs out. Um, and so there are a million different ways that you can use this. Um, you can use it as food, you can use it as medicine. I like to just kind of dose it on a daily basis, especially if you kind of feel the crud starting to come on. Um, I have found that I prefer it personally if it's diluted a little bit. It's not quite as caustic. It's probably a good way to put it. Um, but there's, just go online and Google like fire cider or what to do with fire cider and you'll get all kinds of ideas. Um, and the final step for this would be adding honey. If that's something that you're interested in, kind of sweetening up the flavor a little bit, um, making it a little bit more palatable. Um, and then you are set to go for the rest of the winter. Um, this also makes great gifts that you can give away to friends, family members, neighbors. Um, yeah, just help keep up your family and those around you healthy and happy all winter long. So I hope you guys learned from this. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I have some other kind of like winter wellness videos planned and blog posts that will be coming along with them. Um, and I will see you guys again in the future. Make sure that you follow along with us on Instagram. Um, I am at the scruffy mama and my husband is at the scruffy fam. Um, and then make sure that you subscribe to our channel here on YouTube so you don't miss anything else that we have coming up soon. And thanks. See you guys later. Bye.